So 2020 presidential contender Elizabeth Warren is essentially admitting one of her key promises will cost millions of middle class jobs. Let's discuss with Democratic strategist Kevin Walling and Fox News contributor Kristen, Kristen Soltis Anderson. Good to have you both with us. Good to see you, Shannon. Okay, you're not in costumes. I'm a little disappointed. I but, got the orange um, on. But you look great. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk about some of this. Um, Leon Cooperman, who is this investor, this billionaire guy, he says, basically, uh, he said this, uh, quoted uh, back in September, you don't make the poor people rich by making rich people poor. The Democratic Party seems to be leaning towards the left on policies, which is very harmful for the economy. I don't like the shift to the left. And he and many on Wall Street are saying, we are not going to back these guys. We think they've gone too far, and it's not going to be good for the U.S. economy. And even if the substance of their message is right, the messenger is important here as well. And I got to imagine that Elizabeth Warren is loving it every time one of these Wall Street folks comes out with this message against her. Because even though the fact of the matter is a lot of her policies are going to require raising taxes on the middle class in order to pay for them, will potentially have very negative economic consequences, one of the things she has going for her is that she has this populist message. Americans don't think that Wall Street's working for them. They don't think big business is looking out for them. And so that populist message she has every time it gets reinforced is actually helping her out, I think. So getting attacked by Wall Street and rich people actually gives her some street cred with the people she's trying to get to. Okay. Um, but she's taken a lot of heat, especially over this Medicare for all situation, because now she's admitting that it would cost two million jobs. That's part of the cost. Um, but she's been pushed again and again on who's going to pay for it, how it's going to be paid for. Politico says this, uh, taxing the wealthy won't cover the trillions in cost. Raising taxes on the middle class is a political third rail. Other Options like reducing health care benefits or raising payroll taxes are also politically dicey. Small wonder then that the top tier Democrat, whose motto is that she has a plan for everything, doesn't have one yet for how to pay for universal health care. Kevin. Yeah, Shannon. I mean, I'm a single payer guy. I'm with the vice president on this. We got to improve the ACA. Uh, reports are that she's going to come out with that plan tomorrow, actually, and release uh, the pay fors for that Medicare for All proposal that she's putting out there. Uh, I think uh, it's not a winning strategy for Democrats. It might be, to Kristen's point, a winning strategy for the primary. She's at her best when she's railing against the wealthy, when she's railing against uh, these CEOs, when she's railing against the one percent. And we know income inequality is at its highest point in this country. So she's actually taking, I think, a, a play out. Out of the, the president's playbook from 2016 in this populist message, which may, may very well resonate with the base of this party. Well, and she and Senator uh, Sanders have shared uh, so many commonalities. They, they do um, have differences on key uh, policies, but for the most part, they seem to be in the same lane and now seem to be battling for the same slice of this uh, potential primary electorate. Who do you think comes out on top in that battle? Because he says to her, like it's, a, like it's a bad word that she admits to being a capitalist. He kind of ribs her with that, like, well, she actually admits to being a capitalist. That's right. I, I mean, if you are somebody who's very economically progressive, you may be looking at Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and saying, I want the original formula, not the knockoff. I want the pure, unvarnished, he embraces the word socialism fully. But if you're a Democratic voter who's interested in electability, you may look at Bernie Sanders and say, ah, maybe he's a little bit too extreme. Maybe Elizabeth Warren's attempts to sort of play this Goldilocks game, don't be too hot, don't be too cold, mm -hmm. be right down the middle. Maybe that's enough, but I think her policies are too close to Bernie Sanders for her to really have enough of an electability edge. So if you're really, truly progressive, why go for the generic when you can go for the name brand and Bernie Sanders? Well, and the Wall Street Journal uh, under piece says the Democrats' spooky politics. They talk about the 50-year unemployment low. Didn't just happen. It's the explicit result of Congress and President Trump um, moving forward with Reaganomics. Uh, they say he's going to pound his opponent with the fact that he's created real work for real people. And whether it's Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren, they're going to have to have a better boogeyman to compete than corporate greed. It's a good point. Uh, my concerns are, though, look at just this quarter, though, 1.9 percent growth, I think, is going to be uh, really problematic and is going to be held around the neck of this president going forward. He promised 5, 6 percent growth GDP coming out of his tax proposal. We're not seeing that level of growth, and I think that's going to be a key issue into 2020. Okay, we'll look to see if we get this new policy rollout from Senator Warren with details tomorrow. Likely tomorrow. Meantime, thank you both for coming in. Good to see you, Shannon.